<laughs> I'm gonna start calling out the date. I think that's the what a what a host. Uh, You're really just welcoming us into the day. I appreciate it. Uh, anytime. And we are live, and we're gonna get this started right about. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And we're coming to you live from a couple of places on the internet. We're live over on YouTube. We are live on Crowdcast. Or maybe you're listening to this later as an audio podcast. Wherever you listen to audio podcasts, that's cool with me. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you for listening and watching. We appreciate it. And you know what it is. It's the beginning of the month. And that you is know the time. What it of is. The, you know what you it know is. You know what it is. <laughs> it's the beginning of the month. And that is the time that we thank all the people who support us over at patreon.com slash comic book club. What's that? Everyone's chanting. Say the names. Read the names part. <laughs> Pronounce Use the voice. Use the yeah. voice. So, yes, uh, everybody at the $5 and up level, we read off their names at the beginning of the month as a little bit of a thank you. Uh, it is the least we could do, but we love doing it. And we do it so well. It's the smoothest part of the show. And we're going to kick it off thanking Oidis Larson, Aaron C. Hollis, Adam Marks, Adriel Moreland, Alana Fondo, Amanda Harris, Amy Gonzalez, Andrew Prima. Andrew Tillman, wow. Beer Cat PhD. Benjamin Brown. Carly W. Chris Leatherman. Christina Germarino. Oops, that was his <laughs> accent, Pete has. It's Mario. Uh, Chris Terlizzi. Clemens Luer. Curtis LaRock. Demand Ryan. Dan Snow. Daniel Fuck Putin Cabrera. C- Cabral. Uh, Daniel Fuentes. Daniel Warden. Danny Hack. Debbie Gloom. Dennis Scott. Derek Mainhart. Dylan LJ. Eduardo Martinez. Emmett Quish. Aaron Dorian. Jeffrey Risher. Gerard de Villa. Isaac Carter. Jake Thra. James Connolly. James Kurtz. Jason Donahue. Jeffrey Wally. Wally? Wally. Jolene. <laughs> John George. Jonathan John. Jonathan McCool. Joshua Gibson. Joshua W. Bronxon. Julian Lobato. Catherine Anninson. Casey Newhaven. We got Kelby. <laughs> Kevin Grimes. Kevin Kleinrock. Kieran Broderick. Cody Thomas. Kyle. Lee Brown. Lucas Inc. Mark Carillo. Mark Zeller. Matt Tice. Megan Thigpen. Michael Tillman. Mitchell McDonald. Nathan Diaz. Nelso Kelso. Nick Grayson. Off-White Savior. Well, Official CBC chef, Brett Macris. Omnia Soul Art. Oren Dix. Pablo Martinez. Pedro A. Wrangle. Pete's, Pete's Pretty Kitty. <laughs> yeah. You mispronounced your own name, Pete? I'm right, it. it. <laughs> Pete's Pretty Perp Perp. Uh, Primetime Polly G. Rev Mikey. Rob Bliss. Robert Pedinato. Sarah Schottmuller. Sarah Schaefer. Scott Carpenter. Scott England. Sherry Rudnick. Stanley. Steve Cook. Tamilia Rush. Taylor Brown. Brian. Terrible Johnson. Oh, that was so embarrassing for you, Justin. The Terrible big Jason. <laughs> the 12 Bench. Thomas Gloon. Victor Perez. Will Buchanan. And Zika's Viral Comics. Again, thank you everybody who supports the show at any level. We really, really appreciate it. We could not do the show without you. Now, a couple of other things here I'll mention. As usual, we have a cocktail curated by Stray Bullet. Stray Bullies. <laughs> Brett Macris, our official CBC oh, chef wow. here. This week is from the Gotham Cocktail Book. Again, it is called The Mad Love uh, sort of like a margarita, oh, but with yeah. a little bit of gin and a little bit of ginger liqueur in it. Uh, a little heavy on the lime. That might be my fault, but real good nonetheless. Probably yeah. your fault. 
Probably my that bad. it looks fantastic. I am in a hotel in Atlanta right now for work. Why don't we humble so, brag about some shit? Not not a humble brag. Um, but I am drinking um Prince of Pilsen, a hoppy pilsner, a local beer that I found. This mm-hmm. isn't the time for that. We're you know, this is about stray bullies. Uh, you know, this is not audience. Stray bully appreciates it. locally brewed beverages, Pete. And I think he I would appreciate saying it right now. I was, I was also answering the people wondering where I am because I keep going to different weird places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of things we can't be only pronounced, I am going to move on to our <laughs> iTunes request of today. Now, Ooh. as we've been mentioning for a while here, folks can leave us a rating and a comment on iTunes with a request for a book they would like us to review in the Stack Podcast. This week on the Stack Podcast, we're actually going to be doing one of those requests. We're going to be talking about Oblivion Song from Image oh, Comics, yeah. which yes. was requested by Drew Johnson over in the iTunes comments. But we got so a new true. one here, so I'm going to read it. Uh, the part that I can't pronounce is, I feel like uh, this person maybe made this name specifically to mess me up, but maybe it's their name. I don't know. Yeah. It is. Wow. What uh, a weird su- thing to say before you start to pronounce it. So Jane Wakundin Jebbe on iTunes. Wow says, hey guys, just want to say I love the podcast. The Stack is my favorite show on the pod, as there are too many books to read every week. You guys help me stay up to date. The live show is equally awesome, and I think you guys always do a good job giving creators a chance to get people excited about their stuff. With all of that said, I would love to hear your thoughts on Bendis and Maliv's Daredevil, as that is oh, one of my yeah. favorite runs yes. of all time. Great. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, love yeah, this dude. Well, <laughs> Very excited to revisit that. So we will talk mm-hmm. about that on next week's Stack Podcast. Sorry for butchering your name, um, but thanks for the shouty. Yeah, there you go. And again, anybody who would like to request a book, an old graphic novel, a new one, a comic book we maybe missed, or you just want us to review again, drop it in the comments on iTunes. With Don't do it to torture us, please. Thanks. <laughs> I mean... You can do that if you want. No, no, don't. All right, folks, well, we are is, go- Who is more susceptible to torture on this podcast? Who's the exactly. most vulnerable to be tortured? Is I think me. Funny. I'm, I'm yeah. the most sensitive about this stuff here. Tell you what, we are going to welcome in our first two guests here. They are the creators of a new book called Dead Dreams, The Lucid Chronicles. Brittany yes. Matt and Dylan Ogden. This is currently on Zoop. Check it out welcome. On Hello, welcome. And for those on the audio podcast and maybe on the visual podcast as well, Dylan, you have a snake. I do. Yeah. It's a boss move. It's a boss move. Uh, when oh. I do interviews, I like to hold him because uh, doing something with my hands loosens up my brain. So here he is. Smart. Smart. Yeah, not to make <laughs> this no interview. way to really loosen your hands than a sna- holding a snake. <laughs> yeah. It's the best you know? way, they say. Uh, not to make this interview all about the snake, but what is the snake's name and what type of snake is it? Uh, his name is Dagger. He is mm-hmm. a white-lipped python. Um, okay. He's Ooh, somewhere white-lipped. between one and two years old, probably. And he was the colorist on the book or he did letters? <laughs> well, hey. yeah, he, he, um, he was actually the, uh, the uh, head marketer. Oh, okay. oh nice. Uh, nice. It's, it shows. It's still working. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. He worked hard. He works hard. He gets a lot of um, attention. He knows it. All, all snakes aside, this is a really <laughs> amazing book. And uh, I I was really impressed with the idea. It's such an original, cool idea. And the art's unbelievable. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how it came together. Oh, sure. Um, it started out as a really tiny idea, and then it snowballed. <laughs> um i was talking to like a friend of mine and who ended up being the editor on the book heather Ayers, and it was supposed to be a short you know just like maybe a five pager now it's five issues um and we're now running a campaign for the first issue well why don't you tell us about the concept of the book i mean we got a chance to read it which is great but i'd love to hear you just sort of give the pitch to the folks listening out there yeah definitely I would say it's Fringe meets Orphan Black. So it's got doppelgangers and yes. parallel worlds and a touch of horror, or maybe a little more than a touch of horror. Uh, well, cool. How did you guys get together as a team then to work on this book? Have you worked on stuff together before? Did you get paired together? What happened there? We have worked together before, actually. So um, Brittany and I met because uh, we were both working on a book called uh, Miranda in the Maelstrom, which was written by Riley Beale. And um, the the 
premise behind that book is that it's about uh, dimension hopping. Um, and so every time that uh, the main character, Miranda, jumps into a new dimension, Riley brought on a new artist and the art style would change wildly to oh, signify wow. that she's in an entirely new place. Um, so I was the artist on issue number two and Brittany was the editor for the whole series. Um, oh, cool. And that is initially how we got in touch and met. We met at uh, Emerald City Comic Con after oh. the fact, like after I had already finished my pages. Mm. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I, I, oh, I wanted to say that like the the art as far as like transfer, like, you know, there's a lot of time where you see somebody like doing drugs in a comic or something and it's like some wavy lines or whatever. But like the experience that you kind of uh, put out there for these elixirs, it's really amazing and, and artistically fantastic. Thank you. Well, um, so the other thing about this book that I want to mention, though, I, I think people could pick this up from the title, but it takes place in a world, and I hope this isn't spoiling too much, but it takes place in a world where people can kind of test out different lives through dreams and, of course, lucid dreams. As you might expect, it goes a little bit horribly wrong by the end of the issue. Uh, <laughs> but do you, not to get too personal, but what kind of dreamer are you? Do you have lucid dreams? Is that what kind of inspired this? Or was it just a concept you were interested in? Uh, you're asking me? Yeah, sure. I I have lucid dreamt. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's, I can pull myself out of a dream if it's too scary. <laughs> which is really convenient Whoa. yeah that's nice um, but yeah i think that the the concept itself stemmed from dreams not pursued mm -hmm. and that exploration mm -hmm. and like what would happen if you could live another person's life but it also be you in, in the same way that when you're in a dream and it's you but you feel like it's not really you mm -hmm. that's kind of where this came from I love the idea, and I don't know if this was purposeful or just sort of happy circumstance, but while I was reading this, I was thinking, oh, you're doing this whole book about people pursuing their dreams, and here you are uh, self trying to self-fund a comic book and put it up, and obviously a concept that you're very passionate about. Uh, is that something that sort of fed into it, or is it just something that you're like, <laughs> great, I'm pursuing my dreams in a book that is all about people pursuing their dreams? Yeah, I think it was just a happy accident, <laughs> <I guess. laughs> All right, you lucid enough. dreamt uh, the idea of being successful in the comic book industry and then nice. are achieving it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I have manifested it. Manifesting. Yeah. That was the word I would <laughs> <laughs> With you no. holding that snake, I feel like I'm in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have that affecting people. It's, it's working. I can't <laughs> not look at the snake. Uh, it's very comforting. <laughs> I I was at a party where I, the the person oh wow uh, I had a snake and I wore the snake for the duration of the party and it would just slowly move. Uh, That's like the coolest it, feeling in the entire world. Um, I loved it. He is a little bit too active. He doesn't make the best necklace because he likes to uh, he likes to explore. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if he settles down here for a little bit after I've been holding him, but he doesn't always. Um, but. Uh, Somebody in the comments, I think it was Stray Bullet, mentioned that he has a 20-year-old ball python, and ball pythons are great for that. If you like wearing snakes, get a ball python because they're think... super, super happy to just chill on you. Uh, well, I mean, this book is, like, unbelievable. We read a ton of them, <laughs> and uh, I just want to you know, Pete, like, moving on Pete. from the snake business, <laughs> back to nervous. our business. No, this is Pete's not... nervous about the yeah, snake. This He's like actively an absolute on... nightmare of mine. But uh, <laughs> I, just, I even jumped... Your nightmare is you're on a video chat with a snake? No, a nightmare <laughs> that uh, I live in a place where there's, like, snakes around me and stuff. Uh, I got I some news for you, buddy. Yeah, I you once do. had to go to like a friend's house for, you know, to sleep over and he just had a snake in the room like that was cool. And he was like, yeah, just go to sleep. I was like, I, but it was not, it was not enjoyable. Anyways, though, this book is bananas. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just uh, such a delight uh, from start to finish. I love the, just the paneling, the pace of it artistically. Uh, it's really impressive. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I did want to ask about Zoop because we certainly had plenty of people on the podcast who have a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something like this, but why Zoop? What was attractive about this platform in particular and what 
if anything, makes it different from the other crowdfunding platforms? Yeah, a couple things uh, made it attractive to me was that it was different than Kickstarter and it was comic focused. Mm. Mm. And they also offered to manage fulfillment and shipping and a little bit of marketing. And so that was really hard to say no to. So it's like, yeah, sign me up, please. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. And I got to say, just looking through it here. Uh, having looked through a lot of Kickstarters, it almost feels like the layout is better as well. It's a little more conducive to yeah. trying to people to the rewards. The For anybody who's listening on the audio podcast, uh, it's great for these pages here because rather than having like one page over the width, you can really look at the span of the comic book, uh, mm-hmm. which is really, really nice. So this this seems like a great platform. This is cool. Is it curated or is it something that you can do, people can just go and put up their own projects on? Um, it's curated by the the Zoop personnel, mm. mm-hmm. but I right. I think that most creators kind of you know just give them the content and then they upload it. Um, I do really like that you're showing it in this in this video because you can see the <laughs> um, you can see the navigation on the left, which is mm-hmm. really handy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's great. I'm I'm very much enjoying scrolling through this. Uh, <laughs> but I, I can stop. I can stop. I can scroll through this on my own time. Now, at this point, as we're talking, you have about 20-ish days left on the Kickstarter. Uh, on the Zoop, excuse me. The Zoop. Is that correct? That's okay. I've done the same thing. Yeah. Uh, if people are interested in pledging, I know we just scrolled past it, but what are some rewards that people can potentially expect from the soup. Oh yeah, definitely the book. It's 32 pages. It'll have process interviews and we have a cover done by Dalen and we have a variant cover by Liana Kangas as well. We also have uh, a little bit of merch, including a rainbow glow in the dark enamel pin, a double-sided bookmark and a book plate. And I'm probably forgetting something. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it's awesome. a great project. I definitely think people should check it out and yes. go ahead to Zoop. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for coming on. Thanks for bringing your snake. Uh, <laughs> Brittany, if you could also bring a snake next time, that would be appreciated. Don't, 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 live your own life. Animal. Live your own I, life. I wish I could commit to that, but my husband's definitely afraid of them, so I have to oh, respect. Yeah. You know. I, mean, I don't want to give too much advice, but <laughs> divorce. <laughs> oh, wow. No, man, choose the snake. Choose the snake. Another, choose the snake, Alex's catchphrase. Maybe just another surprising animal, divorced, like a handful of nice. crickets <laughs> or a head. I mean, like a fake snake, you know? Oh, there you go. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the two uh, of you, we both <laughs> holding snakes, one real, one fake, it would be truly a lucid dream for anyone. Yeah, I better get shopping. That would be very surreal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brittany, Dalen, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure, and good luck with the project. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Good luck, guys. All right, there we go. Once Next again, time we'll... I see Marnie, I'm just going to be like, divorce. No, I mean, I don't need to bring a snake until you bring a snake, Pete. We got to even out the snakes. I believe you said that. That's awesome. With any, with any team, you no got to even out the snakes. If one person has a snake, everybody has to have snakes. No. But if there's no snakes, you're well, fine. You're good to go. Alex, when you set rules like that, that makes you want to get a snake right away. <laughs> and then it's it's trio snakes. Three I think snakes. my wife might be fine with a snake. I would not be fine with a snake. I'd be like, divorce. <laughs> wow! I we'll see what happens. Self divorce. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm into this. The first. This guy just self divorced. Yeah. Huh? Weird. The project is called Dead Dreams: The Lucid Chronicles. Again, it's so from cool. Brittany Matter and Dalen Octon. So cool. You can check it Gotta out check on it Zoob. Out. And we are going to bring in our next guest here as soon as I can find it. There we go. Uh, I'm going to mangle his name, even though we talked about it earlier. But Jared Krasiska. He is the creator of did it, ish ish. First of all, there are so many times where you would say like, "Oh, and next another name, I, something I can't pronounce." So like, I get all ready, like, "Oh, that's oh no, it's something." <laughs> pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff I can't pronounce. <laughs> the precedent has been set. Yes. Now, oh. uh, yes. Uh, wait. So, give me your actual name so people can. Oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story that will help you. Okay. okay so, oh wow. Good so, story. So I grew up in Western Massachusetts, which is Eastern Mass, which means we don't say yes. ahs. We drop all of ahs. So growing up, my you. my grandfather, he said that when I was born, 
they were going to name me Oscar. And then my name would have been Oscar Krasoska. And I would hate that. <laughs> right? I would get so mad. And then uh, it turns out it's a really good way to teach people how to say my last name, except for when then I started, you know, traveling across the country with my books and I'd be in like Texas and they'd be like, Krasoskur? Like, no, like, yes, yeah, right. no, you, no. Need, you need to know the regional accent. To... <laughs> you got to go to Worcester. Go to Worcester. Worcester. That's right. Oh, that's great. All right. Well, I'm sorry for back that, but you do have a great book called Lunch Lady. Yes. And there, this just came out, I think, at, towards the end of February, the first helping and the second helping together in one book. Is that correct? Yes. The It's it's relaunched in full color and in hardcover. The, the initial wave of the books first came out in 2009. And paperback, limited color, smaller trim size. So uh, I'm, I'm psyched to be bringing it back to a whole new uh, group of readers in a different format. Well, this book is so much fun. And yes. I know it, it's great for anybody who's not looking at the page right now. I think you can kind of figure out what's going on from the cover <laughs> is pretty, or from the title. But yeah. basically, it's a lunch lady who fights evil in the school. And what Or things, just a lunch lady, you know? Or just a lunch lady. <laughs> Yeah, there you yeah. go. It's like, it's more like a it's Harvey Picard one. thing, where it's just like really, <laughs> yes. you know, it's. <laughs> I, I think all lunch no. ladies are fighting crime out there, you know, in a certain they way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but one of the things that I really love about this book is how hard you hit the joke throughout. You just make sure to sort of play every single angle, every <laughs> single aspect of it, right. uh, and it's so much fun. Do you, when you're trying to tackle a story for this, do you just have? a list of lunch lady jokes and ideas that you work <laughs> in or do they just yeah what was your research kind of... were you going back yeah. to an elementary school did you do like, like a billy madison in? type thing <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it was inspired like the the initial spark came from my childhood lunch lady in nice and that i ran into her, her as an adult and she told me about her grandkids and i you know it was suddenly you know I realized she had a lot going on in her life that I knew nothing about. And, and so I started thinking about the secret, the secret lives of lunch ladies. And then once I came to the idea that it would be a lunch lady who would fight crime, you know, it took like two or three years to like develop that as I would visit schools with my picture books, I would, I would go and introduce myself to the lunch staff uh -huh. and, you know, with my camera, cause I wanted to get photo reference uh, and, awesome. and, and I'd lead with, I'm writing a, a book about lunch ladies and they would, the, the wall would immediately go up and they get very defensive because they mm -hmm. haven't been treated well in popular culture. Like yeah. they've always been the butt of, of the joke. And I said, well, it's a, it's a lunch lady who fights crime. And they were like, Come with me, Mr. President. I'm listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I get to have the I get the tour of their, you know, you got extra units. French toast sticks. Yeah, and... yeah. And so um, you know, the lunch lady, the character, she has you know, she's a dual identity. She she is a real lunch lady. She cares about her kids and making sure they're fed, but she also cares about doing what's right and and beating up evil villain villainous robots. So she like you know, I, I one of my parents was a, a school teacher and he said, you know, you don't want to be the teacher who's not in the teacher's room because everyone will gossip about you. <laughs> and so <laughs> I figured you know, she needs to really work hard on keeping that front that she's simply a lunch lady and that's it. So all of her spy gadgets are disguised as things you would find in a school lunch lady. So it's very like get smart, right? So her yeah. spork is a phone. So I, initially it was you know, what are the staples of, of the school cafeteria lifestyle, right? Fish sticks, spatulas, uh, spork, sporks, like what could those be as items? And, and then as it progressed over the years, you know, okay, lunch lady is in a, in a jam uh, and uh, pun unintended, like I can't help myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so what does she need? She needs a crowbar. Well, what could a crowbar be? And then, you know, and kids are constantly pitching me their ideas of what, could be her next spy. Oh, actually. nice. That's well, and spot. I will say lunch ladies, I feel like leave such a mark on kids. Everyone has a oh, lunch lady story yeah. or remembers mm -hmm. a lunch lady. It's one of the few adults that kids interact with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Throughout their entire ladies, time. Throughout their yeah. entire exactly. time at that school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You change teachers, but you don't usually change lunch ladies because you're yeah. always in the cafeteria. And mm -hmm. I love that. I always remember my lunch lady, uh, which she would get the soup. Uh, and she was like, ah, let me get you some guts. That was a weird <laughs> way to refer to soup ingredients, but I will never forget that in my, oh my God. 
<laughs> we, That's awesome. we actually have a question from Derek Maynard here, but it's actually from his daughter. Uh, he oh. says, my seven-year-old daughter, I don't know if she's watching or not. If she is, I apologize if there was any cursing in the earlier interview. <laughs> but uh, my seven-year-old daughter, Violet, would like to know where you got the idea for Lunch Lady from. I think you talked about that a little bit, but was there yeah. anything specific? Well, it was it was that that initial time of, of running into that lunch lady, and then it, it you know, I, I had this idea rattling around in my brain for about five years. So from two thousand one to like two thousand four, five, six, like I was I was developing the story, and it wasn't until I, I actually went back to read the comics I wrote as an elementary school student. So I, I oh, found nice. this this box of comics oh, awesome. I wrote in, in third, fourth, fifth grade. And I said, well, that's that's the writing style I need for this story. So I, I I used my, you know, elementary school comics and emulated the way I was writing then to now write for 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 uh, kids. It's fantastic. That's awesome. That now, was, what was it like going back and reading those? That must have been so surreal to be like, oh, I need these now <laughs> that I. Did yeah. It so yeah. It's such an important thing that you did when you were little. I, you know, I was very lucky that, you know, my grandfather and my grandfather raised me and every year he'd give me a storage bin and he would say, save what's important to you and then we'll clean uh. up your room. And so so I have this archive of like self-portraits from preschool, like the comics I was making after school and in high school. And there's something about looking at old art of yours that's it's so profound, even more so than like seeing a photo of you as a kid, because you might remember where you were you might you might remember the smell of that paper or or the way that colored pencil felt in your hand and, and also for me just the love my grandparents had for me to make sure i had art supplies at home right yeah. to send me to, oh, to art yeah. classes yeah so you know it's a it's a you know the art that you make over the years it's a connection to your past and, and honestly too you know you spend you grow up and you want to become a better artist so you're you, maybe you're going to school for that but you're you're certainly making art and you're you're trying to advance yourself and then, and then, you know, if you look back or if you have kids, I have kids and you see kids art and you go, oh, like it was there the whole time. So now how do I get back to that? Like, how do I bring that, yeah. that, that, that freshness into, into what I'm doing now? Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. Awesome. That makes me, I'm going to make a bin for my kids every yeah. it's such a great nice. idea to save that because uh, it's, it's hard, hard because, because it piles it. up it's hard. Yeah. Exactly. And it you're like, oh, up. I don't know, throw that. Let's just throw that away. Or like, then it's like, but no, we, if you're thinking about it, it's so, and so important. Yeah. Cause even so like, you know, like you could take digital photos and put that on a cloud, but like, <clears throat> will they be able to access that in 20, 30 years? <laughs> I don't know. They'll be able right, to open right. a Tupperware bin, you know? Yes. Will they though? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, might, I hope so. On the opposite yeah. end, we might all be digital by that point. We yeah. Make it fireproof and waterproof. Yeah. The metaverse. <laughs> so we put Tupperware. <laughs> Our Tupperware's melting. <laughs> yeah, I know. We don't know a very going. specific Tupperware apocalypse happened. Oh dear! Uh, just a quick follow up. Uh, Violet says she liked your answer. She draws comics too. She says thanks. Just nice you know. work, Violet. Thank you, Violet. Yeah, um, I thought it was interesting when we were talking about lunch lady stuff that uh, that everybody kind of has their own school lunch thing. Like I don't know if soup was actually your thing, Justin, but fish sticks came up as well. Uh, was soup actually your thing? Soup was a big thing. I would French get toast sticks was a big soup. thing. I would get um, pizza boat, which was basically a slice of pizza, but they called it a boat in my school for some reason. What? <laughs> was, no, wait, market, was it? Marketing. It was good marketing to get you to eat it. Was it? Because this was the big thing at my school was the rectangular pizza, the one with no crust around it. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then we had an octagonal pizza that they called Mexican pizza yep, that had yep. like spices on it. Yeah, so that yeah. I was also more a big seasoning fan of on there. Yeah, yeah. Mexican pizza. Yeah. Jared, did you have anything in particular that you associate with school lunch? We had a pizza burger. Oh, which wow. was a hamburger, that. but with like the marinara and the mozzarella and the oregano on top of it. Wow. Oh, wow. And Pete, you have in, you you have referenced French toast sticks multiple times, so that was clearly something that stuck <laughs> yes. with you. Did this lunch lady and me were tight and she would on this I would come around the side and she'd hook me up with the French toast sticks like, <laughs> behind her back. Anybody. She'd be like, Don't tell anybody nothing. She'd wrap because I, I love French toast sticks too, and I don't think Pete, I don't think that anyone 
has validated you enough for your also your love of French toast. Yes. I will say you're right because I have not uh, really been clued into the Pete's multiple French toast sticks references. <laughs> now, because you, uh, on a more general sense, because you have this all ages book, and I imagine pre COVID times, a lot of that is going to these schools, talking to legislators, but also talking to kids okay. and doing workshops with them. Obviously, things are for better or for worse, opening up quite a bit now. But what has this period been like for you? Have you been doing more Zoom outreach with kids? Have you been touching yeah. base with them? Or has it been just tough to do that? Uh, so I in the in the before, on average, I would have about 60 events per year, mm. uh, you know, schools, libraries, conferences, conventions. In fact, the first year that Lunch Lady came out to like, you know, I was all in on making this a success. I visited 120 schools, libraries, conferences, oh, wow. conventions. So 60 does sound like a lot, but I actually was able to like bring it down to half of the intensity <laughs> that it was. And it was, you know, of course, terrifying because, um, you know, my, my speaking gigs are bread and butter work. And, you know, it was really like everybody was like really scary. Like, how do I do my job now? So I, I kind of, you know, it's weird. Like every year I create so in January, I create like one achievable professional goal. And in January, 2020, I said, my goal this year is to do more webcasting. Like I I'd like to do mm. more, more live streams where I can reach kids in schools. And I thought, you know, the only way I'm going to do that is if I set up a dedicated space, right? Cause my studio is messy and my studio might have artwork hanging up that I, that can't be public knowledge yet. So if, if it's in mm -hmm. the background and someone screenshots it and I get in trouble, like it's not worth that stress. So, this is a little room in my basement that I created as like, let me just set up a little, you know, camera space and tripod. And, and so when the shutdown happened that first day, when kids didn't have school, I was going on YouTube every single day at 2 PM live every single weekday, wow. giving drawing lessons. I did that for three and a half months, every single day Then I went down to a couple of days a week. Then I went down to once a week and I did that for just about a whole year. And mm. then, and then started doing, you know, quick little, like, you know, three, five minute lessons. But then at some point in there too, I also, I started my own art school. Like I started a, a comics club that kids could join and we meet on. Well, that's awesome. Week. Yeah. Wait, a comic, and, a comic book club you started? Uh, it's just called, yeah. It's called, it's, <laughs> like, it's like this, it's like this, but with sippy cups. What the fuck did you do? <laughs> I mean, and, we kind uh, of have sippy cups, so. Yeah. yeah. I just have beer in them. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, and also schools, like schools, were, you know, be in the before, like some some schools would be like, well, let's try this distance learning virtual thing. And and then suddenly now everyone knows how to use Zoom. So yeah. uh, the pendulum has swung away from Zoom for now because they're I, like my first in-person gig uh, is on Friday and I'm, and I'm stoked. Like I did some in-person stuff in in the fall but I was terrified. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, okay, yeah. like most, it, it just feels different, right? It just feels different mm -hmm. in the fall. It does. Um, but I, I think that going forward for, for people who are making, you know, kids comics, you know, obviously going into schools and speaking directly to the kids is, is really important. Uh, but I also think there'll eventually be a, a little bit of both. I think the pendulum will swing back where, you know, we'll have more virtual author visits for, for folks to connect with kids. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I did want to, I know we we're here to talk about Lunch Lady, but I was curious to talk about another series. You wrote Star Wars, Star Wars Jedi Academy for a while as well. What was yeah. the experience like that? Uh, what was the experience? It was wild. That? It was wild. Yeah. So, so uh, Jeffrey Brown wrote the first three books, like uh, uh, the first trilogy of the Jedi Academy series. And when he stepped away from it, they were looking for uh, someone to create, you know, a new batch of characters for another trilogy. And the editor's nephew was a Lunch Lady fan. And, you know, this email, <laughs> this email came through and it was weird because it's like, you know, I don't like when you think of Star Wars comics, you think like super realistic or, or heavy. Right. And sure. like I draw, you know, for this age group, you know, can't be cartoons. And and so. I, I was nervous for a while until, you know, they, you know, the folks at Lucas were like, look, we hired you to make a book that, that you would make. Like, you don't have to like, you make a Jared Krasoska book that's like set in the world of Star Wars. And uh, so all of my first drafts were just centered around the kid's problem. So the kid's, uh, his own identity, trying to fit in. 
it, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, being in middle school and how do you negotiate where you fit in with your friend, friend group, how you deal with whatever tra family trauma you have at home. Then on top of that, there are droids and there are lightsabers and there are battles and there are Sith that are on their way to kill you. And what are you going to do? So uh, it was, it was wild because, you know, like I just got to play in the, that sandbox for some years. Yeah. It was so much fun. That's, That's awesome. so much fun. That's yeah. the best answer to that question I could have imagined. <laughs> <laughs> and the best, and the best little factoids. So like, you know, like there was a while where it wasn't, public news right and i couldn't you couldn't i couldn't tell anyone and uh I'm, I'm 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 you know organizing all of my receipts putting them in a shoe box to hand them to my accountant and he's like cherry he's like he, he called me like you can't you can't write off star wars toys on your taxes and i was like oh wait <laughs> <laughs> i need them I wow need them that's reference. the best write off star yeah. wars toys oh, yes. so yeah i mean Those i was like i need dream. them for photo reference and i need to you know you know, I, I I I did play with them some, and I did feel like like I was in that scene from Spaceballs. <laughs> where he's playing ah. with the figures. But uh, yeah, playing thrower. So the Lunch Lady Two for One special is out now. Is there anything else coming up that you want to plug that should, people should either check out or be looking forward to? Well, everything is delayed because of the pandemic and because of having three kids and home and all that stuff. So uh, on the horizon, but not till early twenty three. I'll have brand new lunch lady books like new adventures that aren't reprints but new stories and uh i'll have another young adult graphic memoir so i had this other book for for teens and adults called hey kiddo which mm -hmm. is about my life growing up as an artist and being surrounded by my mother's addiction and so there's a follow-up to that called sunshine it's about my time working uh, at a camp for kids with pediatric cancer Oh, wow. So very different, wow. very different stories. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah. yeah. That's awesome, Jarrett. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure chatting, and I look forward to mispronouncing your name. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I look forward to uh, thinking of Pete the next time I eat French toast sticks. <laughs> All right, <laughs> what a mark you've left, Pete. What a mark. Love your yeah. lunch lady here. was unbelievable, man. Thank you. Yeah. For that. Thanks, Jarrett. Thank you. Have a great thank night. You. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. All right. Once again, that is Jared Krasoska, and the book is Lunch Lady. You can check it out That's from so Random funny. House on shelves now, as well as Star Wars, Star Wars Jedi Academy that we mentioned earlier as well. And now we're going to move on to our next section, which is my favorite section because you all make it up. It is your audience questions. <laughs> And for audience questions, all you got to do is drop a question either in the YouTube comments or here on Crowdcast and ask a question. But first, Pete, people have been dying to know the entire show. What you drinking, Pete? Uh, what you drinking? Uh, I made a little uh, uh, Arnie Palmer with vodka, so it becomes a John Daly. You know what I mean? So nice a nope. lemonade and uh, iced tea. Just a little golf talk. Mm -hmm. um, I just quick shout out in the comments. Um, uh, Derek Mainhart, whose daughter Violet asked the question. Um, as soon as we finished that interview, he's like, "All right, Violet, out, quick, <laughs> get out of here, get out of here, get out of the room, run, Good go to stuff. bed." Great question, Violet. All right, we got a couple of questions here. This <laughs> Alexis, Alex. stop. <laughs> Alex, who is that? I don't know. Yeah. My yeah. new lady who likes snakes. Oh boy! <laughs> I don't think your divorce hit, went through, Alex. You just. Said I move it. on quick. I don't waste any time, man. All right. This is from Nelson Martinez over on YouTube. Speaking of lunch ladies and school lunch, any thought on Chris Farley's lunch lady portrayal on the famous Sloppy Joe? Pete? I mean, it's a great song. Uh, you know, it. Uh, you know, rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was magical. I mean, the way Farley was dancing around, it was an interpretive dance. It was, it was very emotional. It was beautiful. Well, despite the probably, uh, negative depiction, many lunch ladies felt about that sketch. I do think the absolute joy that Adam Sandler and Chris Farley had in doing that sketch yeah. makes it worth a watch. Yeah. There we go. This is a question from Jolene. What's the best snake in comics? You can't say Snake Eyes. He's not a member of Cobra, That's right. the he's enemy. Not, he's not an actual yeah. snake. Um, He's not a snake. Huh. He just has snake's eyes in his eyes? Nope. He does not have snake eyes in his eyes. Oh, he uh, likes 
he's as dice it for his eyes. Nope. Two, two ones. Nope. No. Why would uh, he choose that name? Why would he choose that name? Because it's a badass name. That's why. Uh, but I'm it, trying to what think if, of. But like, if my uh, name, if my I guess uh, Sergeant a, uh, a Serpentor has got to be, you know, like one of one of the best. Well, names, before I guess. we move off this, Pete, if I just started calling myself Godzilla? Tugboat, I mean, if I just started <laughs> saying I call me call me Tugboat, wouldn't you be like, why? Why are you calling yourself Tugboat? Well, I would like to hear the story. Sure, you know what I mean. But what if I was just like, that's just my name. I think it's cool. <laughs> well, dude, there's a lot of like. You yourself do tons of jokes about all the ridiculous names of G.I. Joe characters. Um, yeah. You know, the Snake Eyes is the one where you're like, hey, I, this just doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the, the central mystery of my life. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man. He he uh, doesn't talk, and they call him Snake Eyes. So, you know, uh, you put it together. All right, I guess what I'm saying is just call me Tugboat from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Getting back to the question, I'm going to throw out the Midgard Serpent is probably my favorite snake. Oh, after you Googled some? All right, cool. I don't know, maybe. But you ask your new girlfriend about what... what my new girlfriend, Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess Fin Fang Foom, I guess, is also... I, mean, I was going to say Fin Fang Foom. Is he a snake, yeah. though? I he's was, kind of a he's dragon. Not, he's a dragon, he's, but, you know, I'm kind snake. of... He's snaky. He's got snake energy. He's mm. he's a little, you know, he's I'd played for both dragon. sides. I don't know. Uh, I think I gave the only correct answer. Oh, all right. Oh, why don't we move on? our answers? <laughs> yep, that's how this works. Okay, this is from Kevin. In the spirit of Lunch Lady, what are some of your favorite depictions of unusual superhero day jobs? Mm. Mm. Unusual mm. superhero day jobs. Unusual. Uh, I mean, what would you consider unusual, I guess? What's the uh, just deal? Like very, <laughs> very day-to-day, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like a lunch lady, very down to earth. I mean, Spider-Man has held most jobs, I guess. I'm not thinking of anything in particular, but he usually, like, delivering pizzas he, in Spider-Man 2. How about that? He ran a tech company um, and was a millionaire from what that I That was yeah. definitely the weirdest thing for Spider-Man. <laughs> that truly was uh, yeah. because it doesn't make any sense. Josh says uh, running a superhuman temp agency. Uh, the, I think this is a shout out to One Star Squadron running from DC now. Yeah, um, something like that. That's pretty fun. Um, what about when Captain America was nomad and he was just like, I don't do anything anymore. I have the best answer for Captain America when he was the comic book artist on a comic book called Captain America. Oh, yeah. right. That All was. Move. Really fucked up and weird. I, I really liked <laughs> Sorry, it when Violet. Uh, Gray Hulk was the uh, was a bouncer. I thought that was great. And then uh, Wolverine as Patch would also work the door with them. I mean, I wouldn't mess around in that bar. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Great. All right. We got a question here on YouTube. This is from Stanley. Are you guys planning to all meet each other in person anytime soon? Maybe a live Wait. show? What, that was from Stan Lee? Yes. <laughs> I'm back, and I want to know when you're going to be doing a live show. I'm I've returned from hell. <laughs> from, from hell. I love hell. <laughs> I'm, I, every day I walk up to the <laughs> devil and I say, Excelsior. I say, you're doing a great job. I love so making a cameo me. in the pits. <laughs> quit poking me with that stick, you devil, Excelsior. Anyway, uh, are we planning on meeting anytime soon? Um, yes, uh, we should do a live show. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be fun. We could do one maybe at the end of April. What do you think? Uh, I mean. I- if I'm going to be, getting, I'm, getting I'm busy. I'm, I'm busy in April. Too, but I'm ahead. thinking about like, if I was in hell and then like Stan Lee walked by, I'd be like, hey, Stan Lee. Like he would still get love, you know, even. I think you mean like... when you're in hell. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> um, do you, when was the last time we saw it? This prompts a question. When was the last time we saw each other? Now, I know I saw Pete. Yeah. Um, when I was in Philadelphia. Yeah. Like late. And then Middle also late, for year. Pete's birthday, right? Which. When you came to New York, yeah, yeah, was that I went up to came up New York. Yep, yes, 
and I got oh, I saw, but I didn't see you, right, Alex? No, I no, was, was the one time this entire two years I've been hideously ill was the day of Pete's birthday. What a coincidence! coincidence. It was yeah, a weird yeah, coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Well, the one I time I was Pete. sick, I didn't want yeah. to see Pete. Yeah, you were like, it's not worth it. No, it was a super bummer. I was like, okay, I was getting myself psyched up, and then I but, couldn't stop sneezing. Alex, we, you and I haven't seen each other in two years. Two years, yeah. Oh, wow. That's wow. crazy. I've that never really wild. put that together because we do see each other almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. But not yeah. in person. Uh, Kevin's wow. got a little factoid here in the comments. He says uh, the last CB show, C show at the Pit Loft was two years ago this week. Wow. Then we decided to try out a little platform called Crowdcast. There you yeah. go. History. Now, that, that is wild. And I will say, like, we three are what one of the longer relationships in all of our lives, mm -hmm. I would think. So to not see each other for two years is truly. Yeah, um, we'll figure out a time. I know we keep saying that, but the world keeps changing. And hopefully, yeah. hopefully it's on the upswing. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I miss Pip. Oh, cool. <laughs> Great. My dog. You love my dog and my brother and me? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from Stray Bullet. So Pete has a fear of snakes. Any other things you are afraid of? I think this is specifically for Pete. Pete, anything else you're afraid of? Because Justin well, and I have no fears. Yeah, yeah. I'm canonically fe uh, fearless. I, yeah, I kind of, uh, I have a thing about uh, uh, snakes and uh, spiders. This, uh, my freshman year uh, roommate, uh, I almost murdered him with my bare hands because he thought it was cool to buy a tarantula. And um, yeah. Uh, that three people had to pull me off of that guy. What three people? And could you list the nicknames for those three people real quick? Um, because you, I, my, <laughs> greatest, my greatest fear is Pete's nicknames for his friends <laughs> in college and high school. Oh my god! Uh, let's see. Well, I, uh, I don't, th I don't think any of those dudes. Because it was like it was just people in the dorm, so it wasn't real like friends of mine. Was there uh, a tugboat in there? There wasn't a tugboat in there. No, I mean, uh, Chi Rod Nation wasn't there. Uh, the Unseen Vegan Dream wasn't around. Uh, it was just people kind of in the dorm who weren't like close friends. Um, great, great. This is great information. <laughs> this yeah. is from Julian well, uh, Lepato. Are you guys uh, scared of anything? Oh, my God. So many things. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm not the only one who's like. I don't have a ton of fears, but mine are very specific. I'm afraid an umbrella is going to poke my eye out. Mm. I'm afraid of falling down and hitting my teeth. Mm. And I'm afraid I'm I'm starting to be afraid of hotel balconies. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Wow. I don't know. There's something about hotel balconies that make me feel like the building's just gonna tip me out. Wow. Uh, so like, one so of my like big ones is been... it's not even necessarily a fear of heights, it's it's actual vertigo. Like I can just the be comic book line. Yeah, the I'm scared of it. <laughs> Ever since it was canceled, I'm worried. If I get even like in ten feet of Karen Burger, I lose my mind. <laughs> no, no I, I, when I'm, thing? Uh, yeah, like I, there are times, and I hate this. It drives me insane because I'm like, there's no logical reason for this. I could be on like walking across the top of a parking garage, and then suddenly mm -hmm. my brain's like, "Hey, you're high in the air." and I start getting wobbly, it's mm -hmm. very annoying. Um, so that's partially a fear, partially whatever psychologically is going on there. Um, but the main thing, like losing a limb or a finger, that's something that I'm scared of. Uh, oh, also, back in a high school, when we had our whole, hey, don't do drugs thing, uh, there was a lesson oh on God. LSD, and the teacher told a story saying, you know what LSD does is there's a girl who did LSD, and then she hallucinated spiders were crawling all over her, and she took her fingers and put oh! them in the corners of her eyes and popped her eyes out. But the spiders were still there because it was in her brain, not her eyes. And the main lesson was yeah, like, don't do funny. LSD because it's in your brain. And the main lesson I took away was it's very easy to pop your eyes out. Uh, and so and I still like, true. when I go like this, I get worried that I'm going to press too hard and my eyes are just going to go boop. Wow. That's why you wear glasses is finger protection. Exactly. Smart. Um, that's a fucked up story to tell because that's definitely not true. Uh, <laughs> no, I know 100%. Um, here, I'm talking about losing a finger. 
my uh, brother got cut off a big one of the best Great people I know. Guy. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, guy. We know. Cool it. Cool it. Love it. <laughs> uh, brother love. He cut off his finger. A year, almost a year later to the day, my dad cut off his finger. What? With a saw, a different saw. And I'm Magical I'm well water. <laughs> Magical <laughs> well water, dude. It's all connected to the well. I've still got him right now, but I also cut the tip of my finger off making um, uh, a soup once. Wait, was it to the, the day the of when they did it? Was no, it on it was the a finger day. anniversary? Man. When the is the finger anniversary? Because the you should just take that day off and put on mittens. It's this very night. Oh, oh famously ah. protective mittens. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, I have one more. I have one more fear. I actually have several more fears, but the other one that I'll mention is when I was probably like eight or nine or something like that, um, I turned on the TV and it wasn't even playing the movie. It was an ad for Nightmare on Elm Street. And it was the scene where Freddy, from the first movie, where Freddy reaches through the bed and pulls Johnny Depp through the oh, bed. Yeah. And Johnny Depp's just like lying there listening to his headphones. That was the thing. But the thing that my young self took away from that is if you lie on your back, Freddie's going to get you. So I started lying on my front so I could see him coming. And to this day, to, to see him to coming. To this day, I know. To this day, I still have trouble sleeping on my back. Because the thought comes to my head of like, well, Freddie's going to grab me. I don't. Otherwise, yeah, I won't be able to see him coming. Won't but man, when coming. you look and stare into a mattress, you can see for miles. Staring Just into miles. a mattress. That's one of the craziest fears. <laughs> <laughs> Most insane thing I've ever heard. Sleep like a dead body so you can see Freddie coming through the mattress. Through the mattress, you can see him coming. Fears Thanks, always Johnny make Depp. logical sense. Absolutely. But I feel like Freddie wasn't, he didn't come out of the mattress. He cut, He's a dream warrior. He's not a mattress. I, I saw three seconds of an ad. Place. Three seconds yeah. of an ad. It freaked me out. I didn't have the context. Oh, mattress danger is a great G.I. Joe character. Pete, write that down. <laughs> we Freddy have, not the uh, let's warrior? do one more here. This is from Pablo D. Martinez. What's the worst team up? Of characters in superhero comics history, worst team up. Worst team up. Yeah, worst team up. I mean, this is an answer that I'm going to steal from Alex um, if he's thinking it. It's Batman and Superman versus um, vampires and werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was not think that one, but that is a terrible team up book. I was going to say on like the purposefully terrible Great Lakes Avengers is a purposely terrible team up. It's fun to read, though. Like, they're not good, and they're not good at their jobs, and they're not good heroes, but it's fun to read at the same time. There I you guess, go. Uh, and Cyclops and anybody. Perfect. And that is it for your audience questions. Whoa. Now we're going to move on to our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to pull it over. To we're going to pull it on over to Pete. Do we... Uh... Do we? Is it a first hand up guy situation? No, no, no. We have Jolene. We got Jolene oh, dropping right. the hand. Jolene All is right. doing trivia. Also did a hand unnecessarily since Jolene has already signed up to do trivia, but. That's all right. Covering all the bases. Covering exactly, all the bases. Exactly. Exactly. I and appreciate this is, the hand. This is for all of it. This is for all the marbles, right, Pete? That's right. This is for. Hey! Hey! Oh, hey! oh I love Ooh, Look the at this scene behind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hellcat's in trouble. Uh, 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 you want to see the paintings? I got a nice. Paintings. Wow. Um, Talking about fears, that Thanos hanging a spider above Gwen. your bed. Would oh, be wow. scary to me. And Alex <laughs> Ross great. Catwoman. Very wow. cool. Uh, that's awesome. And now I got to fix the camera because that was foolish. No, you're doing no, I, yeah. I love a little tour. Well, <laughs> All thank right, you so for that. Pete, take it away. Okay, today's trivia is on topical comic news and a small nod to the legend Johnny Brown, RIP. Please listen to all three options before making your selection. Here we go. Question number one Batman and blank collide in flashpoint beyond number zero is it a treadmills b watchman or c ned Beatty? so it's either a or it's b which makes sense i guess watchman nice job i don't know how much sense yeah don't know don't make a lot of sense 
Yeah, don't But thank you for it. taking that breath, Jolene, before you answer. Yeah. <laughs> really added go. to the who wants to be a millionaire energy. <laughs> That's the theme trivia. music. Here we go. Question number two. In Hulk number six, we meet the deadliest Hulk in history. What is its name? Is it A, Rage Issues, B, Titan, or C, Poppy Montgomery? So it's either A or it's B, which makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, I guess Titan is a better Titan. name than Rage yeah, Issues. Is. That's true. That's Poppy true. Montgomery it's sounds like a great Hulk. Though. I sort of like Poppy important. Montgomery as an I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Something to think about, Marvel. All right, here we go. Last one. <laughs> Golden Apple Comics kits, kicks off its new charity with help from blank. Is it A, Frank Miller, B, Frank the Tank, or C, Rick James? So it's either A, Frank Miller, which is the only thing that would kind of make sense in this context. I mean, B, Frank the Tank is Frank Miller's nickname, but... He disappeared in the 80s, so that, I don't, I guess A, somehow. A is correct. Yes, wow. somehow it is A. Congratulations, um, you have won a $25 gift card to Midtown Comics. So yeah, like Comics. last week, I'd rather you donate it to the trans helplines in Texas. Um, right? Yes. Speaking up, it is my one Thank year you. anniversary since I started HRT. So, uh, yeah, oh, congrats. Congrats. congratulations! Thank you. Hey, that's uh, yes, great. we are happy to do that. We definitely will. What was the website address? Just if people Ooh, want to do it as well, do you remember? I forget, but I will get it to you. Okay, that's great. Right, we'll drop like it on Twitter. TX or like that. Trans kids, maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, we'll look that up and we'll tweet it. Uh, Jolene, so good to see you. Thank you yeah. for coming on. Thanks for playing trivia. Have a great Thanks night. Thanks so much. All right, there we go. And if you would like to participate in trivia, I'm going to drop the link in the comments here for any upcoming dates. You can win $25 or donate it to the charity of your choice. In the meantime, new comics are coming Wait, out. I just wanted to say in case somebody's oh, right, wondering right, what right. my third answers were, it's uh, from the 1999 hit Life. Great. No, no questions. No Great. questions. <laughs> So, new comics come out all the time. Pete, what are you looking forward to that's coming out? Oh, thanks. Thanks so much for asking. Oh uh, I tell you what I'm I'm looking forward to. Lunch Lady and uh, Dead Dreams because uh, we just had them on. But, man, I can't reiterate enough how great that is. Uh, we read so many comics, but theirs was really above and beyond and definitely worth checking out. But also uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El, number nine. Okay. Nice. Um, I'm going to give it up for our, uh, Spider Gwen Gwenverse by our guy Tim Seeley, uh, which uh, you comes Tim out. Seeley. You love Tim Seeley. <laughs> You're right. Uh, and I'm going to throw it out to two titles that are coming out this week. One of them is Little Monsters, number one from Image Comics. It's yes. from the team of Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wen, who are always awesome together. They've done Ascender and Descender. This is a more horror-themed one, so very curious to see what's going to happen with that. And the other one, Punisher number one from Marvel, Jason Aaron, launching a new Punisher title. Always very exciting. Can't wait to talk to my good friend wow. Pete about Man, whatever goes on in that fun. issue. Wow. I think that'll be a fun discussion. And we're sure. going to be talking about yeah. all of that stuff in our stack podcast which rolls out in the com <laughs> comic book club feed and also it's own dedicated stack feed and folks that is it for this week's show Woo! couple of people we want to thank we want to thank Brittany matter and dalen ogden for coming on for dead dreams the lucid chronicles also jared j krasoska talked about lunch lady which is out now from random house close enough there we go next week Oscar, next week we're going to have dr travis langley is going to be here to talk about his new book batman and psychology so we're yes. going to get into that. So that should be a lot of oh fun. Boy. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked it out already, we have a full The Batman review that is currently rolling out in the Comic Book Club feed. So you can check it out there. It is full spoilers, though. So if you haven't seen it in theaters, don't check it out until you do. Also, it's we have a new episode. 
We also have a new episode of Let's Hear It for the Boys in the Let's Hear It for the Boys feed, all about the boys' Diabolical, the animated spinoff, which you can check out. If you want to support this show and all the shows we do, patreon.com slash comic book club. You can subscribe on iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice. Don't forget to leave us a review request in the iTunes reviews at Comic Book Live on Twitter, Comic Book Club Live on Instagram, Comic Book Club Live dot com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, good night. Good night, guys. For Alex Pete Tugboat, I'm out. <laughs>